Hello everyone, welcome back to the video call app series. At this point, we are almost done building the video call app and congratulations to you for making it this far. In the previous video, we added functionality to make and answer a call. So if you missed that video, go check it out on the link showing at the top of the screen. But in this video, we're going to wrap things up by adding a few extra features. The first is what a feature to uh, clean up a call when one pair leaves right now that's not being handled so we have to have that handled then we're going to wire up the audio control button the video control button and also the end call button and lastly we'll add a ton server to application if you don't know what that is you don't have to worry about it because we're going to be showing you how that's done in this video my name is confidence and i'm a developer advocate at cloudflare let's get started all right, so heading back to my computer, I already have both the server and client running. And if we go to the browser, we should have this up as well. So what we're going to start with here is cleaning up the connection when one pair leaves the call. So going back to our illustration, if we have both Rob and Emma on the call and Emma leaves, we want Rob's clients to be able to clean up the connection to Emma so that we don't have weird glitches in the app. So I'm going to show you what that is um, to be more specific. Now I have created a call and I just have one client in the call. And if we have another client join this call, as you can see, we have two clients in the call. They can both see and hear each other. Now, if we leave the call from the other clients, so I'm going to close this. You notice that while my video preview here still works, the other video is frozen and it doesn't look great. We have to clean this up. So we can go ahead about cleaning it up by writing a code to handle the event when one client leaves or when the other client leaves. So we have this event type called left. Once that event gets fired, we can do a couple of things. We can close the web RTC connection. Then we can close that client's video and we can go ahead to maximize my own video. So let's go ahead to write that in code. What I'm going to do is head back to the IDE and here in the handle messages, when we receive a new message that has a type of left, we want to do all of the things we just said. So we're going to call a function called end call. We haven't created this yet and we're going to break this case. All right, that's all we need to do here. Um, so let's create the end call function. So this is function and call doesn't have any params. So what we're going to do here is first close the WebRTC connection. So this is peer connection dot close. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to close the video of the other calling peer. Uh, so this is going to be peer video dot class list dot add hide. And we also want to maximize our own video. So this is going to be my vid dot class list dot remove uh, video player secondary. All right, so that looks good. And we have these changes saved. I'm just going to maximize this because we don't need to have a view of the terminal. So that looks good. I'm going to refresh this so that we have a new call going here and let's duplicate this so that we have two clients on the call. And we do, we have two clients on the call now. Now, if I leave the call from the second window, you notice that all of the cleanup we just coded happened. So we have the connection closed. Then we have the other client's video removed and we have my video maximized again. And that is exactly what we want. So we have the end call cleanup going and that's lovely. The next thing we're going to do is wire up the call control buttons, the mute button, the video button, and the end call button. It's going to be so simple that I'll just have to copy paste the code and then I can walk you through what that code does. But trust me, it's really simple. All right, so this is the code for it. We have those three buttons and we're adding events for all three buttons. So for the video button, the audio button and the end call button, for both the audio and video button, we're running this function called toggle track and we are passing in the video track. And if you take a look at the implementation of toggle track, all we're doing here is simply flipping the enabled switch on that track on our local stream, which is this variable we have right here. And when we do that, we're able to turn on 
or off the track, depending on what it was previously. Then the last thing we're doing here is we are also flipping the icon displayed on the UI. Because if you take a look at this, I'm just going to save this. If you take a look at what we have in the images, for each audio control, we have an icon pair representing the on state and also the off state. Same also goes for video. We have the on state and we also have the off state icon. So that makes it easy for us to uh, update the UI. Now we can head back to the browser and see if this works. I'm just going to reload. All right. So we should be able to start stop the video. For the audio, if you try stopping it right now, we have an error. That is because we don't have any audio track in the local stream. So we need to um, have it enabled. So previously we had this turned off. So let's go find it so that we can enable it. So this is audio. All right. And here where we set audio to false, that is in the start local playback function, we want to set this to true and that should enable the audio stream on our local track so we can uh, refresh this and we should be able to mute the mic as we can and we can also stop the video. And lastly, we can go ahead to end the call and this is going to navigate us to the home page, um, which is automatically going to trigger the end call function on the other client's device. So we have the call controls done right now and that's awesome. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to configure a ton server. So previously we've seen a ton server, which is what we currently use in the app right now. A ton server helps to discover the public IP address and ports we have an application running and it enables both clients to discover and communicate with each other. Now, a ton server is a bit different. It is used as a backup when direct communication between both clients fails. For instance, if one device is behind the firewall, then direct communication is not going to be possible and you have to rely on a ton server. A ton server basically acts as a relay where data is pushed from one client to the ton server and the ton server forwards it to the other client's device. So it's a relay and it's going to be useful in cases where we have one client behind the NAT or some sort of firewall where a ton server can't establish a communication a ton server will be able to do so in that situation. So for us to um, configure that service, we will need to be able to connect to a ton server and Cloudflare offers this um, free of charge as a part of the Cloudflare calls offering. So let's go ahead to grab the configuration to connect to a ton server. So I'm going to go to my dash. So this is dash.cloudflare.com. And like I mentioned, this is totally free of charge. So feel free to go to your account. And what you want to do is navigate to calls and you can go create uh, tokens to connect to the Cloudflare's Storm service. So let's create a ton service token. And this is going to have like a random name generated. You can choose to update that if you want. And uh, clicking on the create button, we have some credentials here. So I'm just going to copy this call command. And I think that's all we need right here. So let's head back to the IDE and you want to create a new terminal to run that call command. So this is the call command. I'm just going to hit it. And this call command returns some JSON, which is going to enable us connect to the uh, stone server, to the ton server we're trying to configure. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead to copy this. So let's copy this. And we want to format it in such a way that it can be used by the WebRTC client on our application. So if you take a look at uh, what we have here in the line where, where we're trying to configure the environment. So we have the environment, the, the web circuit. We also have the environment.servers. And here we're passing in an I server that has a URL of services to which the first thing we are doing here is configuring the stun service. And now we want to configure the turn service. So once the JSON we have generated to be formatted in such a way that it can be used directly in our application. So what I'll do is head back to the browser and let's find a JSON formatter application. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the first one because I have used this previously and it seemed like a nice service. So let's go ahead to delete all of that and I should be able to paste what we've copied. I don't think that was copied correctly, so I'm just going to have to recopy this. So let's copy all of this. 
to copy this, go back to the browser, paste this, and we can try to format it. And this looks good. So I'll copy this over and paste it right here. So what we want to do is create an array of ice servers. So that's the first thing we need to do here. This is going to be ice servers. This is going to be an array of ice servers. And each ice server is going to be an object that has um, URLs as a property. And that's going to be like something we'll configure later. And then we can close this. So I'm going to copy this a couple of times and paste it in because this is all we need. So copy this two, three, four. So we're going to paste this in four times. All right. And the first thing we'll be doing here is configuring the stone server. So this is the stone server. Copy this over and paste it in here. Actually, I should cut it. So let's cut the next one. So I'm going to cut this. I'll paste it in here. I'll also cut this. I'll paste it in here. Then I'll cut this. And I'll paste this in here. And let's add a comma. Um, then for each of the ton services, we also need to put the username and credentials. That's for each of the ton services. So let's cut this. I'm going to cut this. So let's cut this. I only need to paste it where we have a ton service configuration and not the stone service. So paste this in here. All right, that looks good. I'm also going to paste this in here because we have another ton service configuration. And lastly, we'll paste this in here because that's the last ton service configuration. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to delete the trailing comma we have here. And then we can clean up all of this because we don't need it anymore. And we can try to format and that looks good. So this is a valid JSON and we have our configuration here. So I'm going to copy this over and we head back to the IDE. And in the IDE, we want to create a configuration file for this ton service we've just uh, created. So I'm going to create a new ton.json file. All right. And we can paste in the content we just copied and that looks good. So what we want to do now is we want to figure out a way to fetch that JSON file and use it as our env.servers in our production environment. So that's what we want to do. And actually that's pretty easy to do because we can make a fetch request to that file provided that uh, the file is local. So we can do an env.servers equal to await. Okay, so right here we're using a top level await. It means we have to change our import type to model. So before going on, I'll just save this. And what we want to do is um, we want to we want to go back to the call.html file. And right here where, where we are importing the uh, call.js, we want to change the type of the import to model. Model. All right, so that looks good. And we can head back here to finish up what we're typing. So we want to make a fetch request to the Java, the JSON file. So this is fetch. And we want to fetch the ton.json file. And then we simply want to ensure that this is converted to JSON. All right, so that looks good. The last thing we'll do here is we'll also want to configure the env.ws for the production WebSocket environment. And to get that done, what you can do is go back to the backend server. You can quit this and you can simply run npm run deploy. And that is going to have your backend deployed and you should have the URL you can use as the configuration on the front end. We already have this deployed. So what I'll just do is use the URL I have. And let me quickly grab that. All right, so I'm going to configure env.ws, and this is going to be the URL of my production WebSocket. And that looks good to go. So we have everything looking good to go. And uh, if we go to the if we go to check it out locally, there should be no change because locally this is running on localhost, right? Uh, so I can just try to do a check here to see if that is going to work locally. All right, so I just switched to the production environment by invalidating my local configuration. Now, if we go to create a new meeting, 
and inspect. We don't have any errors, so hopefully that works fine. So let's put that back. And what I'll do is deploy this application. So I'm going to close the terminal, clear, and can run npm run deploy. So that should deploy my client with the configuration we have just created um, right now. So that should do the deployment. All right, so this has created the deployment and we can go check this out. This is a preview URL for the deployment. So let's see if this works and it does. So we have the preview deployment. We can go to create a new meeting. So I'm going to go create a new meeting. And because this is the first time I'm visiting this link, it's going to ask to um, allow my mic and camera permissions. So I'm going to click on allow and you can see we're connected to the call. So let's try to join from a different client. So what I'll do is let's open this up again. All right. And I'm going to grab this call link and I'm going to paste it in right here. And let's click on the join button. And as you can see, I'm just going to mute the mic. Okay. We have the mics muted now. And as you can see, we have a real time call going on. So both clients can see hear each other, interact with each other. Of course, I can also stop my video and you can see the video is blank for the other clients. So yeah, this is lovely. And we have our application fully built. And with that, we're done. It's been really awesome building real-time applications with durable objects. And I hope you have a lot of fun with it for the projects you'll be working on. We have a few more projects we'll be creating using durable objects and making videos on. So don't forget to get subscribed so that you don't miss those videos when they become available on the channel. Alright, that'll be all for this series and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.